I will open the event. Tanse Nito Timjak Tanis Peranto Nitsi Gasan Naya Apitawigo Sisan Segitawak Nitsotin. Hello, everybody. My name is Tanis Peranto. I am a member of the Metis Nation of Alberta from Region 6. And I'm here to welcome you to our Indigenous Futurism panel. Um, I'm the Events and Media Manager at the American Indian Community House. Thank you for joining us. And if you are new to the Community House, or maybe you've never heard this before, I'm just going to read you our mission. The mission of the American Indian Community House, otherwise known as AICH, is to improve and promote the well being of the American Indian community and to increase the visibility of American Indian cultures in an urban setting in order to cultivate awareness, understanding, and respect. AICH is a 501c3 not-for-profit organization serving the needs of Native Americans residing in New York City. AICH was founded in 1969 by Native American volunteers, uh, I have a dog chewing a cord, as a community-based organization mandated to improve the status of Native Americans and to foster intercultural understanding. And I'm going to pass it to my colleague, Tatiana. Yad eh bena everybody she aya Tatiana Benali Vinishka Porto Nasha Nanis of the Tachi Nish Way and I Tachi Dina Ebashi Sin Kimpachini Dashi Che Ado Bizani Dashinale. Hello everyone, my name is Tatiana Benali. I am from the Navajo Nation. I'm calling in from Chapel Hill, North Carolina right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, like Tana said, I'm going to read the mission statement for, for the women's gathering. So our intention with the women's gathering was to provide a space for any and all Native women, femme, non-binary, transgendered relatives to offer relevant, informative, and art-related workshops in a space to gather and celebrate among one another. The gathering is two day long uh, virtual sessions, so today and tomorrow, via Zoom, obviously, um, the sessions are for us and by us, this year's theme being nurturing and grounding, including sessions on food sovereignty, indigenous futurism, like this panel that we're on right now, midwifery, caregiving, and women's health. The result is to have the participants walk away feeling grounded in community with access to resources and strengthen community. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass it off to Jolie to introduce herself. Go ahead. Awesome. Thank you, Tanis and Tatiana. My name is Jolie Cloutier, and I am from the Onondaga Nation, and I will be the moderator for this panel. I'm super excited to introduce our young panelists today. Um, our panel right now is the Indigenous Futurism Youth Panel, and it features youth from all across Turtle Island who will collectively cover the topic of Indigenous Futurism together. These panelists have been selected by the American Indian Community House as Indigenous Futurist Fellows for their work within Indigenous Futurities and dedication to their communities. So I do want to welcome Mia and Emily, if you guys want to turn your mics on and um, I'll let you guys introduce yourselves any way that you want to. Okay, Mirna, Mia. Um, hi, Mia. Hi. Um, I'm Zapotec and Mind Descent, and I'm happy to be here today. Awesome. Emily, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, uh, thank you. I'm Emily. Um, I'm from Pine Ridge Indian Reservation of South Dakota. I am currently in California at an art school, and I am so happy to be here to share my knowledge. <laughs> awesome. I'm sure you guys have a ton to say and a lot of knowledge to spew out, so we'll just get right into it. So today's topic is Indigenous Futurism, and I just want to know what that means to each one of you. Mia, if you want to go first. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, well... To me, I think Indigenous Futurism is really um, about reconnecting and um, acknowledging Indigenous knowledge um, and to share that with the youth and the upcoming generations. 
it's really important to um, share your knowledge with the youth because as Zapotec youth, um, I, it was really important for me to learn my culture because it's it connecting with, um, with like, you know, your ancestors. So um, it feels like you're finding yourself. And um, I was put in a school at um, second grade, a school for indigenous youth called Anahuatameca. And it provided a safe place for um, the youth to thrive in like with being yourself. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I have a bunch of questions about what that entails. So we'll get to that in a minute, but I also wanna hear from Emily and just hear what indigenous futurism means to you. Yeah, um, indigenous futurism means a lot to me, like talking about it, uh, making our community better, um, putting it into action and uh, just helping the youth, helping those in need, especially in our community. Um, I just, uh, every time I think about like seeing people on the res where they're like on the side, like homeless or drunk or, um, it just makes me wanna help and do more for my community. Awesome. We're off to a super good start. Do we have another panelist right now? Yes, I just let her in. So we can just take a quick pause here and we will let Meadow, welcome Meadow. Hello, let you get settled. Um, let's just add, do some techie things here. Um, Hello, Meadow. We just finished introducing ourselves. We asked our first question, but we can circle back and, and include you in that. But if you would like to take a moment and introduce yourself, we would love to hear it. Okay. Um, say go, everybody. My name is Dehunjiasta Meadow Cook. Um, I'm an Akwazesne Mohawk from the reservation of Akwazesne. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you for having me. I, I had a few Zoom troubles. <laughs> No problem. We all know about the Zoom troubles. Speaking of Zoom troubles, this is something I should have just troubleshoot actually before we started, but since we're stopping for a little tech break, Mia, I just want to, um, you know how we got into your audio settings for the youth plays? Can you just open your audio settings real quick? I just want to check something to make sure that it's set properly so we can hear you um, as best as possible. So if your audio settings, does it does it have the box checked where it says um, automatically adjust volume, microphone volume? Is there a way for, can you uncheck that box? And then can you slide the slider over to the right to make it louder, your microphone louder? Okay. That's uh, better. That's okay. <laughs> great, yeah, sorry, I should have done that before. Multitasking yeah. Zoom issues. Okay, great. So. Um, Meadow, um, hi, my name is Tanis Peronto. I'm the events and media manager with the community house here. I work with Yagawahene very closely. Um, Tatiana here on the Zoom is my colleague as well. Jolie here is one of our co-hosts for the day. So I'm gonna let uh, Jolie circle back with that question and bring Meadow into the conversation. Cool, thanks so much for joining us, Meadow. We all know what those Zoom troubles are like, so <laughs> no problem. Um, we pretty much just got started and we were just talking about Indigenous futurism. And my first question is, what does Indigenous futurism mean to you? Um, when I think about it, I see our youth everywhere. It, that's just a given. And the way that I've seen it in my community reflected is the people finding their way back to the things that we had thought were gone they've found their own traditions without the help of anyone. I mean, possibly the ancestors, <laughs> but they, they find that on their own and it's so beautiful to watch and to see them continue to grow towards the things that they didn't even know were our way. Like <laughs> they watch and they see our elders and our struggles in our community and they find a better way. And that's, 
that's my definition of it. <laughs> that's so beautiful. Everybody had such varying and just very beautiful responses. I'm so excited to have this conversation. So I know that all of you mentioned in a way, you know, just wanting to help your community and help fellow youths sort of find their way in the community. So I'm just wondering if we go through each person, how do you think, what do you think is most helpful to help youth get involved? So, you know, what are the ways that we can help get everybody involved? We'll start with Mia. I'm just gonna kind of go Mia, Emily, and then Meadow, so we have a steady. All right, well, um, I think what it, a great thing to have a positive role model to look up to, especially like to look up to for teaching. And mm -hmm. um, for me, that role model was my grandparents to help me, they were helping me learn, they are helping me learn my um, my language Zapotec and they're reconnecting me with our traditions. Mm -hmm. And they're really teaching me and my siblings a lot of things when it comes to culture. So I think it would be nice to have a positive role model for mm -hmm. youth and for everyone. Awesome. That's so awesome. Emily? Um, well, I agree definitely with the positive role model. And um, mine is basically my parents. I grew up, they raised me with uh, Lakota culture. I grew up learning like all the rituals and stuff and um, definitely putting things into action would like, I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> oh, it's, it's just super simple. It's more, you know, what do you think as a futurist, what do you think let me, let me think of how to, how to phrase this. What do you think would help other youth get involved in wanting to be sort of like a positive role model? Because yeah. I know that Mia mentioned that. So what makes sort of a positive role model? Um, definitely getting involved with the youth and um, being supportive, being there. Um, I want to talk about my mother. She she uh, is starting this art program for the youth and and she's like my most greatest role model because she's actually starting something and actually doing something. And therefore I wanna do the same. And that's, that's, that's just amazing. <laughs> that's so awesome. I can't wait to see what you do with that. Um, Meadow, it's up to you. Uh, yeah, I totally agree with both of you. I mean, I agree with Emily. I think that showing the kids action and actually doing it for them first and showing them that there is another way in our communities and there is another option than the things that have already been set in stone is really important. And doing those things, um, we found ways to do them through the project that I'm working on personally. Um, <laughs> we do like, just bringing them back to the earth. We've sort of lost that in this age of technology. And it's really nice to see them reach for those things again and to try and go back to that. I think that <laughs> having them reconnect is super important. And that's the way that I've found works the most positively towards them. That's so awesome. You mentioned a project that you're working on. Do you wanna tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, yeah, so my mother and I, we founded a, pro a environmental based project and we've moved back to our ancestral lands and we're trying to create a community there that's completely sustainable and we're trying to bring the youth back and to bring them back to those places and to see to feel their connection to their ancestors and to feel how strong that can be in guiding them the rest of their lives. And we've really started to see that reflected in this community and it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> um, yeah, they, they like, they've come back for trips and they don't wanna leave. And it's just beautiful to see that starting to grow and it even expanded to the adults. <laughs> so it's really changing our community up here. That's so beautiful. And I like that you also mentioned that, you know, 
adults also need guidance sometimes. I think one of the reasons why we're doing this panel is because you guys are the future. You guys are gonna be here for generations and generations to come. So the fact that you guys are taking these, you know, really important leadership positions, it's just so awesome. So I just wanna thank you guys for taking that sort of responsibility on. It just, it makes, it makes my heart warm. I know that we're in good hands in the future. Um, so I know that we've been talking a lot about culture and ancestral roots. So I think just sort of a basic question is what kind of role does culture play in your everyday lives? We'll, we'll go through the list again from Mia, Emily, Meadow. Okay, um, for me, culture is through our everyday lives in like clothes that we wear, in um, jewelry and accessories and the way um, we speak, you know, uh, we share our knowledge with our siblings, our grand um, <laughs> grandparents share their languages with their, the youth at home. And it's great to, you know, um, be able to have uh, firsthand information from people like that. So like, I like to encourage everyone who has like an auntie or a family member around them during this pandemic to learn off of them because it's really important. So, yeah. Oh, that's so awesome. That's so nice to hear. Um, Emily, do you have anything? Um, culture for me, um, I grew up with it, with the culture culture, and it's, it's basically my life. <laughs> and um, every time I practice it, then I always feel at home. I feel safe. And it's very therapeutic to me, and it helps a lot. And especially seeing everybody together at like powwows or Sundance or <laughs> Sweat Lodge, it just um, brings you a sense of community. And it's really nice to have culture. And it makes me very passionate to where I just want to share it with everybody. <laughs> um, and I'll, I'll always go back to it, so. <laughs> yeah, it's really a comforting thing. I'm so glad that we did this this weekend because I live so far away from my home and my community. So it's just nice to, you know, get, get back to it and listen to the important stuff, which is you guys. Um, Meadow, what does uh, culture mean to you? Um, it's been a little bit different for me. Um, my family was really impacted by residential schools. So culture has looked like rediscovering that for, for me personally. I, ha I had to find my way back. I had to find my way back to our ceremonies and our songs and our language. And it's been a long journey, but I've had my entire family here to do it with me. And I find that my family is my most important reflection of my culture at this moment. <laughs> this is all so inspiring to hear. You guys are just nailing it. <laughs> um, so you guys, you know, you're pretty young. You have your lives ahead of you. And I'm sure that you're thinking about, you know, college, whatever, growing up. Um, you know, how do you think you can keep your roots and your culture with you just as you get older, whatever path that life may bring with you? How do you think you can keep yourself grounded? And what's the importance of that? Um, well, for me, I plan to always, um, even when family members do pass with their knowledge, they're um, they will pass, but their knowledge will still be alive with um, with the people that they share it with, right? So mm -hmm. I want to travel to um, my grandparents' homeland and, you know, like, go there for, like, a year maybe or something like that because it's, like, inspiring. Everything that we're saying is, like, so inspiring that, like, 
it's like such an urge that I want to do that. Um, it's, yeah, well, I don't really have anything else to say. But yeah. Honestly, that was an awesome answer. You made me want to go there too. That's something that now I have to do that. Um, Emily. Um, well, already, especially being here in California, away from home, um, I always practice it, like talking to, to Conchula or lighting some sage and um, just, I, I have like a small pouch that has like, uh, what's it called? Like, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Whenever you're born with the, um, the thing that's attached to your mother, I forgot what it's called. Umbilical cord. cord. Yeah, umbilical yeah. cord. So I put that in the pouch, or my parents put that in the pouch, and they saved it for me. And that will always be my prayer. And that's what I always have with me all the time, whenever, especially whenever I'm away from home. So I always have that with me to always take me back home. That's so cool. Like some sage. Um, and that's what I will always do every single time I've been away for him. And I, and I always have my parents to call to. Um, we're always so close and we'll always talk. And that's what, that's what, what I do now. And that's what I will do forever and always, <laughs> especially through college. That's amazing. That's, that's so cool. I love, I love learning about the pouch. That's so awesome. Oh, do you have it? Oh my God. Like a, a turtle. Uh, in Lakota culture, the turtle represents a woman. And my mom made this for me. That's so beautiful. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for sharing that with us. That was so cool to see. Um, I think we'll move on to Meadow now and you can tell us a little bit about what that means to you. Um, yeah, I think that this last year has kind of really secured my identity as an Ungahuma woman. And I think spending all this time alone and reflecting and staying with my culture through all of that has formed a bond that won't even be questioned possibly. But I definitely agree with Emily about the sage and smudging <laughs> that will always bring me back <laughs> also. Yeah, I think going into myself and reflecting on what how strong my identity is and being in the climate and environmental world where people are from so many different backgrounds is really securing myself in mine because I get to see other things and I it makes me trust more in my path in my direction all right that was awesome you guys, you're so easy to work with. You all speak so well and everything's so coherent. Um, we do have a few chat box questions. So it's going to be, these are going to be quick questions. The first one is, what's the thing you would most like to change or shift in your life or your community right now? If whoever has an answer first can answer, because I know that that's a, a bigger question. So I'm gonna go first. I don't have an answer yet. <laughs> oh, and um, it was added. And how do you feel that that could happen if it's possible? So if you have any ideas, we'd love to hear them. If you guys want, we can circle back to that question so you can think about it for a minute. Um, but I'd, like, I'd actually like to go back to Emily for a second because Tatiana was wondering if you could explain a little bit more because you um, showed us the pouch, kind of what that means. And this is another question. And how you could possibly incorporate elements of your culture um, using less contemporary mediums, just so it's a little more accessible to wherever you are. Right, yeah, so from what I remember, <laughs> the the pouch is created whenever you're born, right? And then the umbilical cord is put in there and that's supposed to be your prayer for the rest of your life. 
and like um in my culture everybody has their own prayer the only difference is that the father in the family is supposed to have a prayer for the for his whole family and then the that's basically whenever the the uh, boys and men they grow up to make this prayer for a family and the men are supposed to create a prayer or a shield around that family. So the pouch just basically just means that it's just our prayers, our own individual individual prayer. And the turtle represents the woman because of how they act in the shell. It's like the home um, turtle island. You know, it, it connects to almost everything. <laughs> um, that's awesome. That's but, so but, yeah, that's what that's what I can remember. So <laughs> awesome. So let me see. Okay, yeah. No, that's my bad because I did accidentally mix two of the questions together and form them into one, and it was not coherent. So I will ask one more time. So Tatiana just clarified. Um, she was wondering if you guys could talk about your work or your craft, because we know that all of you guys are artists in your own ways. Emily, you mentioned that you go to art school. Um, Meadow, we know that you have that little thing going with your mom, your little project. And Mia, I know that you were a part of the super fun acting classes that we did a few weeks ago. So if you guys just wanna talk about the crafts that you do and sort of how important that is to you and if you integrate your culture into that into any way. Um, okay, so um, I really like to paint and I really like to sculpt with um, clay. I, I, I'm always like trying to extend my abilities and so that's why I entered the acting classes and it was like such a great opportunity because it was so fun. Um, and then I usually paint whatever feels right, you know? Like at the moment, if I know like there's something wrong that I want to express, I express it through art and I express it through like painting. Um, I'm, I've always liked drawing. That's like just one of, some, something that runs in my family. We love to get like our hands like dirty. We, we're always hands on. Um, and we love to participate in activities. So we're very creative. Um, and yeah. That was awesome. No, yeah, I know that art is just super therapeutic. It's a great way to get emotions out. I feel like that's kind of why we all use art is to get whatever we have inside of us out in a healthy way. Right. Um, Meadow, we haven't heard from you in a minute. Do you have anything that you want to add? Yeah, I'm, I shuffle through the mediums. Uh, I, I'm really into making my own clothing right now. And I, in everything that I do, I try to add a native spin to it or add something from our stories or our history or our culture. Um, I, I'm also into draw, um, drawing, painting and sculpting too. But I usually paint, I paint what I have dreams about. So I will try and um, put those stories that I see or that, I, that are related to my people into a painting and I try to reflect all of the different um, ancestors that that came from or the, the people that I see in my dreams. I try to paint their faces because I don't, I don't know who they are and I'm still trying to learn about my ancestors and connect to them in any way that I can. I think um, sculpture is a big, I'm trying to make entirely my own pottery for my entire household. So we don't have to even rely on the store anymore or for anything. And we're trying to work towards completely separating ourselves and completely being sovereign in every aspect of our lives, <laughs> my entire family. Wow. So that's a big, um, those are my main three art forms at the moment, but I'm interested in a lot. So I like to hear from others. 
I think it's so cool hearing you talk about sovereignty and sustainability. Um, Yago Wehene just sent me a little chat and she wants you to talk a little bit more about the project that you work with your mom because it's all about being sustainable, right? Yeah. Um, so we're trying to build housing actually that's fully off the grid and fully disconnected from the rest of society or this nation, the, U the US and Canada. And we're trying to move towards um, biochar. I don't know if any of you guys have heard of it. Um, you that? Using sustainable, like right now I'm trying to do um, hemp, hemp fabric and we're, we're working with hemp very like widely right now. <laughs> um, but their stocks can be used and recycled into energy. So we're trying to focus on clean energy, clean housing, and returning to our culture and environment. So we're, we're kind of across the board trying to focus on a lot of different things at once. <laughs> but we're doing a lot of work in our community at the moment. Um, this last year, we donated a thousand trees and planted them all in a weekend. So we're trying to combine our community here with our ancestral community and bring them together somewhere in the middle. And we're trying to completely disconnect, like I said, with um, the rest of society. We're trying to go back to our completely old ways and um, we're, we're really doing it. <laughs> we're, we're meeting all the right people and I'm really grateful to be on this because you guys seem like the right people too. <laughs> But yeah, I can, um, I think that's the basics of our project. We did, we had a huge garden this year too. And we brought that food back for the community that we're originally from. And we're doing a lot of community-based work at the moment while we secure, we are looking at over 280 acres of land and we're planning to move um, and create this community and make it happen. And it's, we're so excited to find this community as well. <laughs> that is so inspiring. I feel like sustainability is so important to native communities, especially in times like this in COVID times. So it's incredible to hear that you guys are really out there and you're really doing it. Oh, that's so cool. Well, thank you guys for doing that. And thank you for sharing that with us. Um, just, just one last thing. Can you pronounce your Mohawk name for us? Um, Dehunji Osta. Dehunji Osta. De Dehunji Osta. Would you prefer to be called that instead of Meadow? Um, I mostly use my English name just for this stuff, but if if you guys can say it, yeah, I'd totally be open to that. <laughs> it's totally up to you. It's your name, so I figured I'd ask. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh my God, that was that was such a cool answer. Um, we have a question again in the chat and it, it's a multi-part question. So I'll just kind of ask one at a time, but I guess the first question is, how do you see yourself as you know, indigenous teenagers in modern society? What kind of role or responsibility do you think you have as indigenous youth just out in the world? That's Frida, whoever wants to answer first. I know that it's a big question. Um, I think that our role is honestly to overturn all that has been set for us as indigenous teenagers. We're, there's so many things that we've put ourselves in, so many boxes, and we're, we're the first generation to truly break out of that. And we're the, we're trying to heal not only ourselves, but our elders and our entire communities. And that's a huge role to play. <laughs> Definitely. And there's, that's, that's a whole multifaceted thing, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, Emily, I see you're unmuted. Do you wanna to add to that? You know, I definitely um, agree. Like for some reason, my whole life, I always felt like I was gonna change something or gonna do something. And I would definitely love to do that with all of you and with more if we can. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. 
Um, Mia, you have anything that you want to add? Yeah, um, well, as Indigenous youth, it's really inspiring to see and be in this part of the program because, you know, it's great to um, meet new people, you know, especially people who understand and people who are around your age and are like really encouraging. It's, um, it's something great to do. Um, I'm so glad that you guys are here. We're all getting to know each other. I feel like that's a, it's a good step to take. Um, I do have a question. So I know that now it's 2020, we're, you know, so far into the future already. And I feel like as natives, we're seeing the most representation that we've ever had in the media. You'll see, you know, um, we're, we're kind of everywhere now. We're in, we're on TV, we're in movies. There's more artists coming out. There's just so much more exposure and inclusion. So I'm wondering what you guys think about it. And, you know, visibility is always a good thing, but what do you think about the new representation in media? I hope that made sense. Yeah, it was perfectly clear. Um, it's, it makes me like genuinely so happy to know that there's more rep more representation going on, especially in the indigenous community, mm -hmm. because for, um, the youth, there was, there is a lot of discrimination towards, um, Native Americans and indigenous peoples, mm -hmm. and to see that there are uprising people who are so strong and so um, inspiring, it's, it's really great to um, have that. That's so awesome. Oh, that's fun to hear. Um, do, does anybody else have anything to add to that? Yes. Um, it, yeah, I agree. It makes me happy. <laughs> but especially with like how history was with how reservations were, were created where we had to stay in reservations and we were like allowed to go out. Um, and it just makes, makes me happy to see those that are like finally showing up. And especially on social media, I see videos of um, native people doing powwow dances and singing songs. And it's just awesome to see everybody out and um, can't wait to just see more, you know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, Meadow, do you have anything that you want to add? Yeah, um, when I see representation, I think that that's super important. And I, I love to watch my niece, um, personally, my niece grow up and having that in her life. And I like to include the activists in it. And I like to think of myself as a model for some brown girl somewhere <laughs> or some little girl on a res or even a little boy and to show them that we are the ones who are here and doing things and we're actively trying for them and to know that they can do that too and I think that the place that we're in is a really good step towards a future where we will be more represented in every aspect of our lives. You guys have literally the best answers ever. You're the easiest panelists I could have asked for. I think just on the topic of representation, where, in what areas would you like to see more of that? In what areas would you like to see natives taking up more space? Just in everyday life. Again, a loaded question. I'm sorry, you could take a second and just like think about it and talk whenever you're ready. I think definitely in our government, I think that it's a native government. It was modeled after my, my people's, the Confederacy, and there needs to be more. There, and we've seen a lot of that this year, but I, there, there's always gonna need to be more. <laughs> um, I think that's my main, the main place that I wanna see representation, but yeah. <laughs> For sure, and I hope we're moving towards that every day. I think we get a little bit closer and closer, but I'm confident that in the near future, we'll see 
some more representation in that. I just want to uh, say that you read my mind. <laughs> um, anywhere else? I mean, government for sure. Um, I know that in urban spaces, it always feels a little bit like you kind of get lost in these big urban jungles. Um, but I wonder, you know, anywhere else, anywhere specifically, because I feel like we are everywhere. It's just we're not visible every everywhere, if that makes sense. Um, I kind of want, I want to see more people getting more involved with one another in the community, yeah. especially my community. Everybody's close, but they're so separate, like mentally. Mm -hmm. And that, that's just that's just what I want to see more of, like supporting each other and um, talking to one another. Um, let me ask you guys, do you think there is a gap between the generations? Do you think there's a gap in communication between different generations in the communities? If you've experienced that personally, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I for sure think that. I, I've seen my own youth be silenced by elders because they there's been conflict in the, in the past in our community between the elders and they will silence us or shut us down when we're simply trying to bring new ideas or present new ideas for ways to resolve the conflicts in our community. But we're being at, at this moment, we're, we're being, we're in a power struggle <laughs> and we're trying to help them, help guide the elders to pass on their roles. And they're, it's, it's a bit of a power struggle at the moment, but we're getting somewhere. <laughs> um, we're looking to change the leadership roles. That's like the, the most major thing because the leaders at the moment are upholding past conflicts or past grudges against people who they shouldn't or who they should walk to with a fresh mind because we aren't our families and it's hard to um, communicate to that, that to them as strong-minded native people. <laughs> but we're dealing with that right now. And it's definitely, we're, we're making progress. It's just a matter of how fast that progress is, I think. <laughs> Thank you for elaborating on that. That takes a, that's, you know, you're out there and you're saying everything that you need to. So thank you for doing that. And thank you for sharing that with us. Um, I just know that in my experience, I had um, encountered, a, you know, just some generation gaps where the communication was a little bit off. So I was just wondering if that was my experience or if you guys had experienced that and in what ways you think that you could sort of seal that gap because the space belongs to you right now. Anything that you want us to know, now, now's the time to share it. Well, I think that there is a gap between gen generations because in a lot of families, there are like um, generations who have been, you know, not able um, or provided with the resources to learn their culture and mm -hmm. um, um, to learn their traditions. So they lack that knowledge. And then um, with the newer generations, the gener they are being taught and it's great because I know a lot of this part of the generation I'm so happy to be in this generation because we're not only going to teach the youth about culture and knowledge but we're also trying to teach um the past generations of like new knowledge and like to seal that gap we can do that that's so awesome it's so it's just so awesome to hear you guys talk about this because um, this is about you this is for you and it's also for everybody else because we just want to listen to what you have to say because right now we're just we're centered and we're focused on you um so if there's anything else that you guys want us to know or just something that's weighing heavy on your mind um we can just open up the space and talk about that for a little bit
And in the meantime, I just want to share some things from YouTube. I'm trying to keep an eye on comments here. Um, there aren't questions, but there are two comments that I'll just read right now. Um, from Shalia Ben says, you all are so amazing. Our future looks great. Ahehe. Tatiana, did I say that right? <laughs> to you all. <laughs> um, and from one of our community members, Irma, uh, she says, you are doing wonderful and much needed work. So proud of our youth. So just wanted to make sure <laughs> that you heard that. Um, and I just want to thank you all for sharing so much that, um, that you all just did. And I think that um, it's, it can be twofold in a way with you um, doing this work that you do to try and heal um, older generations. But then I think there's something so powerful and that you've already probably experienced in just being yourselves and being who you are and um, everything that you've shared with us that that just naturally will have an impact on its own um, without any outside effort, if that makes sense. I feel like that's something that I've seen um, in my family in particular as well from the youth that are, you know, doing that reclamation work for themselves. It has a really beautiful carryover um, spill out to other people. So I just wanted to say that resonates with me. Thank you for that. Do we, Tannis, do we just want to open up the space to anybody on the call that wants to ask questions? Um, we could do that. I had people type in the chat box, but if um, anyone has a burning question that they'd rather verbalize, we could unmute you. You can raise your hand or just type in the chat box. We're doing so good, you guys. Or if any of our panelists have questions for each other, if you want to, oh, yeah. no pressure though. I mean, of course, I only want you to talk about what you want to talk about, but maybe some maybe this has in, um, inspired some curiosity about things i could listen to meadow talk about her project with her mom <laughs> literally forever i have so many questions about it and i think the idea i said it already but the idea of sovereignty and sustainability i think we all think about it a lot and we all think it's something that's oh that's too far away it's too you know that you know how does that exist anymore? But the way that you explained it to me, it sounded so doable and it sounds so promising. Yeah, it's, it's, it can be a very daunting task to think about, you know, um, as a whole. Um, so actually that made me think of, is there any, are there any links or websites or anything that you three would like to share with us where we can um, go on the internet and find out what you're, what you're doing that you do, do you want people to know about? Um, if so, just drop them in the chat. We can share them on YouTube. Um, I'll let you type <laughs> for a second. And um, our participants who are watching, um, if you do want to ask like a set of question, you can go into the participants box and raise, click the raise hand button and your little blue hand will pop up. Um, or if you're on video, just wave and we'll see ya. Um, or just type. I have a question. <laughs> oh, sure, go ahead. For each one of you, um, how are you connecting with your peers? How are you organizing that? Are you organized or are you looking to organize? Um, and yeah, like where are you all at with that? Um, a lot of the work that I'm doing when I am home and when I am in my community again is talking to friends and not even <laughs> talking to community members and people who I have yet to make friends with and just simply connecting with them and presenting what we are doing is usually enough to bring them to some understanding with me and to bring them to want to help or to want to do the same things as us. And it's really helped in unifying the youth because a lot of us were divided for a time and it's bringing us back from 
the the ways that we shouldn't be following as youth or bringing us from the other ways that have been presented to us like partying and all of those things and to see them make that um decision for themselves to choose a different path is a really beautiful thing to watch um I find that we've made a lot of progress and a lot of people are curious about this project or at least know of it and it's it planted a seed and we're just simply waiting for it to grow. It's so beautiful. Um, does anybody else have anything to add on to that? Because I do have a question and it's a burning question. All right, I'm just gonna ask it. Um, Cause I think we are sort of coming to a close here. So just, you know, as one sort of like last resounding, you know, whatever. Um, what advice would you give to any youths who are out there, anyone who might be listening or anyone who has parents who are listening? What advice would you give to any youths who are in a struggle to find their place in their communities or just in general. Um, any advice to any, you know, struggling teenagers? Cause I know we all know what it feels like to be there. Um, if you have to, uh, to definitely just keep going and to just find something or someone to talk to and just keep going. Cause in the end, whatever you do, it's always worth it just to be there and alive and to always uh, another advice is to just talk more, uh, talk more in your community, to people. And um, I recently lost someone that was very close. And definitely just one thing that I wish is that I wish I like talked more. And that's just one advice that I just want to give is to be out there and to get to know your family if you're always quiet and to be close. <laughs> I think family definitely always helps and it helps you sort of connect again. Um, Mia, Meadow, do you have any advice for anyone who might be listening? Yeah, um, I do. I really like this question. Well, my, um, my answer is to always um never be afraid of you know getting out there not not like socially out there in during this time but you know talk to your family um and talk to them closer because there is um a lot of youth that i know that are like afraid or like ashamed who they really are so mm -hmm. like don't Ashamed because um, in the end, you are just like your spirit and your energy is so immaculate that it's like just something to take care of all every day. Just to take care of yourself and to love people around you and share positivity, you know, and of course, share knowledge. Share um, with your siblings, share it with your cousins, because you might, like, be useful on, like, something you have to do with school, and you don't, like, spend time with um, connecting with your sisters, you know, because it's really important, it's just nice to sometimes, um, you know, talk to someone you feel like is around you know like because don't don't you guys ever get where you like you just feel someone's energy there next to you so i like to like, you know get out there and talk to people even if they're not there like i feel like they really are there that's some great advice thanks so much for sharing that meadow do you have any last advice for anyone who's just trying to find their way yeah i i would say starting with the earth and connecting in that way I started with gardening and starting with gardening brought me to a place where I could fully put myself 
in a place of authenticity. And it brought me to meet people who reflect that authenticity. And it brought more genuine people in my life and in my community who have the same goals and ideas as me. And connecting to the earth first, um, it brought me so much better in, into so much better of a place spiritually that it was easy for everything else to follow. So definitely getting into the dirt and <laughs> planting seeds and doing gardening. That was awesome advice. And I'm taking all of that advice as soon as I'm off of this. I just want to thank you because I know that we're running really short on time. Emily, do you have something quickly? Uh, I just want to say another advice that I've just noticed that I just thought of. Um, that to definitely love yourself before you love others because I've noticed that a lot of people, especially at home, they try to love others, but they still hate themselves. And that's just always hard to do. So yeah, love yourself. <laughs> oh, also, um, I'm putting in the link of my mom's art um, academy thing and she's looking for artists, all kinds of artists uh, to teach youth and to help youth uh, in my community. That's so awesome. Thank you for sharing the link. Um, I just wanted to take the time to thank our panelists. You guys took time out of your Saturday, which is, I, it's so much to ask for, but you guys taught us, I, I learned so much today and I found so much comfort in listening to the three of you talk and I just know that our future is in really, really good hands. So I want you guys to know that you all did such a good job and we're, we're all super proud of you and we're all so happy that you got to spend some time with us. So yay. Yes, yay, well said. So much, I, I agree with everything Julie just said. I So much of this resonated with me in so many, everything. There's something from each of you, multiple things from each of you that you've said that have resonated with me personally, um, some that I've already shared. But um, Emily, when you were talking about um, wanting to center um, people and people being apart um, mentally, and I feel like I've seen that. It's like I normally live in New York City right now. I'm home in Canada, but um, that's something that I feel like I've seen in the city is there's a lot of... We have the highest population of Native people in an urban area in New York City, and um, I feel like there's. I would love to see more centering of the community as a whole. Um, so that was really resonated with me. Um, and Mia, I love hearing about your connection to your grandparents. Um, I have a my grandpa um, on my dad's side, which is the, the Native side. Uh, he's 95 now, and he's losing his hearing. And I just I'm someone who came. Um, who came to want to learn about and reconnect with who I am as an Indigenous per person, like reclaiming that, um, like kind of how you talked about, um, Meadow, um, that he's the person who holds that information and he's getting to an age where he can't really hear that great anymore. So I'm like writing him letters and like letting him know what's going on with me and trying to connect that way. And so trying to learn what I can from him. But um, I just wanted to share that with all of you. So super inspiring. I hope you got to see all the amazing, wonderful supportive comments in the chat box. Um, oh, Mia just dropped a link to the link to her school. I'm going to copy and paste that right now so we don't lose it. Put that in my little document here. Yeah. And congratulations again. And thank you so much for applying. And we really appreciate that you took this time to share um, yourselves and your work and everything, uh, your your wonderful knowledge as well. Um, more well wishes in the chat here. Um, and thank you everyone for joining us for this. Um, it is streaming on YouTube right now. It worked and it will live on YouTube. If you wanna go back and watch it, you can share it. Um, next up after this at 4 p.m. Eastern, we have a panel called, where did it go? It is our, oh, it is our women, women as the first environment, a broader ecological perspective from a Mohawk midwife elder. 
um, Mohawk midwife and environmentalist Gaji Cook will lead a presentation about her work, um, followed by a private Zoom only Q&A session. So that will also be streamed on YouTube, but the Q&A session will be private on Zoom. And that's, oh, we got some more. Three Sister Sovereignty is on Facebook. Awesome. Instagram. I'm just going to say this stuff out loud so YouTube can hear it, but I'll also drop it in the YouTube comments too. Um, Instagram, TikTok. Oh, that TikTok. <laughs> Twitter, <laughs> three sister sovereignty.org will be live in the next week. Fabulous. Thank you for sharing that. I'm going to drop that link right now. Great. Yay. Super excited. Well, Jolie, do you want to? take it away to end us here. Yes. Thank you so much to everybody who joined us today. We had so much fun. Um, just a reminder that AICH is a grassroots organization and we live off of donations. So if anybody would like to make a donation, it is AICH.org slash donate. I think I got that right. Um, so thank you so much everyone for joining. It means a lot, I'm sure you know, to our panelists and all of us involved. It was a really great discussion and, and we'll see you guys for the midwife panel. I'm going to end the YouTube live stream. Goodbye, YouTube. Everyone on Zoom, you can stay on for a minute or so if you would like. Um, but panelists, actually one more time right before I end it, if there's anything you wanna say, um, if you wanna say goodbye, anything, go ahead right now. Um, if you like, I'll give you the floor for a couple minutes. Or if you're good, we can just end it too. Good. <laughs>